Lots of you have been incredibly kind about some of the more theatrical stories that we've imparted here on the channel, realising, of course, that I do love the world of theatre. As I say, on a more serious note, it's very expensive now. So when you go out, it has to be something uh, of an experience. I was talking to a colleague recently who went to see Moulin Rouge in London. And I said, oh, were the tickets expensive? He said, oh, not too bad. £75. You can imagine. I needed an ice cube to cool me down. I was absolutely stunned and I thought, not too bad. But of course it is theatre, isn't it? And there are many people to pay. The rent, the building, the actors, the choreographer, directors, musical, all that sort of stuff, costume. There's so, so much cost in it. In fact, recently, Lord Lloyd Webber basically stated that, you know, to put on Phantom of the Opera costs around about a million a week. Now, this was on Broadway. I'm not quite sure where he got those figures from, but nonetheless, he's a master at it, so we must trust him. But it's the experience of theatre, isn't it, that basically makes people excited. You go in, and there, if you're going into a beautiful old theatre, you sort of revel in the history of it, you know, how many people sat there before what were they doing all of that sort of stuff but as one colleague pointed out to me they wanted to know exactly well why do we sit in the stalls and why do we pay so much money for them well let me tell you that wasn't always the case the stalls in fact those are the seats on the ground floor were normally seen for the cheap people let me explain the bottom line is even in the Victorian age when most of the theatres were built by a splendid architect Frank Matcham. He developed most of what we now know as British traditional theatre. Well, you see, he was designing them to make them look like palaces, you know, empire palaces, hippodromes, that sort of thing. And we all wanted to go along because really we were stepping into something that most of the time, most of us couldn't afford. Carpets, you know, gilt head sort of things, uh, brass rails, that sort of, it was a glamour. It was glamorous life for two and a half hours. But what about the boxes? Well, as I pointed out to this colleague, you see, the boxes really were like the Instagram of their day. I don't know if you've ever sat in a theatre box, but you see, when you sit there, you simply do not get the best view of that production. You can see in the wings, that's the side of the stage. You can see what's going on. You only really see half of the production, particularly if they go downstage. So why do people want to sit there? And more importantly, why were they developed? Quite simply, as I say, they were the Instagram social media of the day. If you were rich, you wanted to sit in a box. It wasn't about seeing the play. It was really more about being seen. So naturally, you know, you would come in your refinery, you would look your absolute best, and the word would get around the theatre that Lord and Lady so-and-so were in box A. Now, if they looked down upon you and even perhaps graciously gave you a short wave, wow, this was it. This was almost a like in Victorian times. And that's the whole reason as to why boxes, even today, are still seen as the creme de la creme if you want to go and sit in them. But the bottom line is, if you want to see the best productions, well, sit in the stalls or sit in the circle in the centre. They give you a better view. But if you just want to show off and pretend to be a Victorian in a social media age, then definitely the boxes are for you. But what about the Royal Box? Well, did you know this, that at most performances in any theatre, they're not allowed to sell the Royal Box up until 30 minutes before. That is in case the King and the Queen decide to honour their presence to that particular production. The Royal Box must always remain. And more importantly, if it is taken and someone has decided to sell it, then be prepared to be removed as the Royal Box simply must go to royalty, as it states. Neil Sean in the very heart of London.